Welcome to the Frozen Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are learning about making money, making films. Literally, we're talking about art direction, props, and how to get what you need to make your film without it costing you this much money. So on a Hollywood film, you have quite a large art department. You have the production designer who sits down with their pen and paper and sketches out what the scenes will look like, what the, what the sets and the um, props and, and the world of the film. They basically design that. Once those designs are finished and the director signed off on them, they get passed to the art director whose job it is to bring those to life. They usually work with set builders, scenic decorators, and then the costume designer who may or may not be working under the production designer, but may go off on their own tangent. Um, they have costume makers, the props people, the props master, whose job it is just to be on set and always have the prop you need. So this can easily run to a dozen people. Um, that is very expensive on an indie film. And so there are a lot of ways around that expense of both time and manpower um, to get what you need for your film when you need it. When you work on a bigger production, a lot of the art director and sometimes production designer's job is renting, hiring different things from prop houses, bringing them back, having the director look at them, um, choosing one, hiring that, returning the rest. And it can take a, you know, weeks to get all the stuff you need and all, all ready to go. A much better solution is just to go on Amazon uh, yourself and buy the stuff that you need. The um, perfect example is this watch. We looked at hiring one. They all pretty much looked similar to this. Um, some had more of a patina, some had different designs, but they were between uh, 50 and hundred dollars a week to, to rent from a prop house. And this one cost me 15 bucks. And I got to keep it after the film was over. I think we bought two of them. We lost one and then I bought it again. When you buy stuff on Amazon, uh, not only do you get to see multiple pictures of all of it right there, uh, you get it delivered to your door so you don't have to go get it. And if you don't like it, you can return it. You may even do what some people have done in the past, who shall remain nameless, of buying things on Amazon, shooting with them, and then returning them. So step one, if you can get it on Amazon, get it on Amazon. Things don't look, even in a close-up, this watch feels so cheap in your hand. It feels like it's made out of yellow tin, but on camera, it looks great. The things that give away cheapness are usually the weight and um, the details, and not a lot of those things show up on camera. Another great example is money. It used to be very, very difficult to get realistic looking cash uh, for your bank robbery scene or your ransom scene. Uh, you used to have to either use real cash and people would use singles with a hundred dollar on top, or they would hire it from specific prop houses that had got a license to reproduce it and it was tracked. You had to leave a big security deposit. I got these ones from Strobe Props. Uh, I'll leave a link below. Um, they look, like you say, on camera, they look exactly like the real thing. If you look closer, you'll see that the security um, tag is actually just printed on. It's just a little bit off color. Um, it doesn't have the same texture as, as real money, but on camera it sells. That's what's really important. And especially you could throw a ton of these in the air and make it rain um, and it's gonna look good enough. The idea is that you don't need to spend an absolute fortune getting an exact copy of what it is that you want. It just needs to read on camera. So I definitely advise you to do camera tests with your props, shoot it and look at the result and see if it sells. Now, if I went downstairs and tried to buy my lunch with this, get a knock on the door from the Secret Service, but when you're shooting with it, you're on set, uh, it's really gonna save you. One of the biggest prop issues people run into are guns, getting an armor on set, uh, working with squibs, working with blanks, working with special effect people. What we did for Devil's Fortune and what I've done previously is just to buy the airsoft versions. You can't get these everywhere. You can't have them sent to a New York City address, say, but most places you can get them. And again, they don't, feel real in your hand, but if you can get one that's gas powered with an action, working action, um, that gives that actor something to play off, something with a little bit of weight, then it's probably gonna do its job of conveying the menace and conveying the uh, idea to your viewers without being 100%. Yes, there are some people that look at movies and say, that's not a real gun, that's not a, you didn't really die. I, I find that really strange because of course they didn't really die, that would be murder, this is a movie, the people who are watching understand that 
there's not really music playing in the background, that it's added by the filmmaker to heighten the emotional effect. If you're interested in more tips like this, go to canonmasterclass.com. I have uh, 20 something videos there, uh, all of them much longer than my YouTube stuff, all of them dealing with uh, camera lighting, cinematography, uh, directing. You can buy each course separately or you can stream the entire site for just $14 a month. A couple of other little tricks we used on Devil's Fortune is we used uh, diluted apple juice as whiskey. This is because you don't want your actors drinking real whiskey on set, they'll get drunk. Also. Uh, you want to dilute it because once someone has done take 15 and they're drinking real apple juice, they're going to be uh, feeling kind of sick. So you want to dilute it as much as you can so that it looks like real whiskey and sells the illusion. One thing that I learned from uh, Peter Jackson and watching the um, director's commentary on, uh, I think it was King Kong, is that he does a thing called dress to shot. He lines up his shot with the cinematographer and as the cinematographer is lighting that shot, often what he'll do is get interesting things from the other parts of the set and put them into the shot that's there so that the world feels really full and uh, it's sort of like, and you have as much density uh, as possible in the frame. It doesn't matter if the rest of the room is totally empty. If you've crammed all of your <laughs> props into that one uh, shot, the world and the, the, pro the scene is gonna look really full. Ridley Scott is also famous for doing this, having started as a art director production designer. And on the set of Alien, he would constantly walk around with a black spray can and uh, mark down and uh, add little bits of texture um, to the set inside the shot to kind of give it more gritty realism. Another very specialized prop that we used on Devil's Fortune was an eyeball. Uh, I googled it rather than hiring one from a special effects house or having one made which probably cost me you know a couple hundred dollars I found a Etsy store that only sells severed eyeballs. I was able to get the color that I wanted uh, it got shipped to my house I think the whole thing cost $15. We accidentally left it in the location uh, in the owner's mother's bed so that when she came home that night after we were shooting in her house she got into bed and felt something and pulled out an eyeball and uh, I'm still trying to live that down. Strobe Props has other um, hard to get items as well. Uh, gold bullion, uh, even Bitcoins. If you're making a truly up-to-date uh, action thriller. If you're shooting a scene like we were at the Watchmaker in Devil's Fortune uh, and you have a lot of stuff to dress, it does make sense uh, to ask your crew to bring in anything that they uh, might find interesting. I think we got a Maltese Falcon in there, I brought a skull. Um, we were also shooting at a place called Ideal Sets, which has multiple sets, I would say a couple dozen sets in the one soundstage in the facility. We were the only people there that day. So what we did is go down and raid all the other sets for their set dressing, bring them all up and put them um, in the frame so that the uh, this when we got there, this place was just an empty attic. And uh, when we had dressed it, we had maybe a hundred different items that made this um, space look really full. I'm a huge fan of art direction. I think that it's an amazing opportunity to tell more, your audience more about the characters, more about your world, um, to make your films look distinctive and interesting, and to combat the idea that you often get in low budget films that the world is only skin deep, that this is a cheap movie um, that people haven't put a lot of thought or time into. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.